Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I am so excited on today. Uh, not because it's my Friday, but because I'm excited about each and every one of you and what God is doing in our lives. And I was sitting here and I was going to talk about one thing, but um, I want to talk about this right here. I want to talk about um, freedom. Once you have been set free, remain free. And it is the feeling of you knowing that the chains of bondage has been broken and destroyed from your life and you feel this freedom in the spirit it has been broken it has been destroyed remain free remain free do not go back into bondage do not allow what you have been delivered from to snare you back into what you have been delivered from. And we can do that sometimes. We do that because we become familiar with that comfort zone. And it is, it's a place that we don't recognize but I want to say to you that if you have been delivered if you have been set free if the yoke of bondage has been destroyed in your life remain free so if you've been set free remain free whom he has set free is free indeed Don't go back into bondage. Don't go back to doing those things that you were delivered from. If it is in your mindset and what has been holding you captive mentally, where you have not been able to move forward in certain areas of your life, once that stronghold has been destroyed from your life and you can move forward, stay free do not go back and entertain thoughts of doubt or of fear or anything of that nature that stagnated you that held you to a place that you could not progress or move towards what God has for you and we do that a lot of times we get the breakthrough we get the deliverance but several things happen. We do not replace the doubt with fear. We, 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 we replace it with things that are not of God. So if he removed doubt from you, replace it with faith. Replace it with believing. If he removed stagnation from you, replace it with moving forward allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. But whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And our scripture is over in John, the 8th chapter and the 36th verse. And it reads as follows. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Let's look at it in another place. Let's take a look at the whole word of God. John 8 and 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. And so this is what is being spoken. If you are free, if God has set you free, 
you are absolutely free in Christ Jesus. There is nothing that is holding you back. There is nothing holding you captive. You have been set free, but we have to remain free. We have to recognize those things that have held us so that we could not move, so that we could not maneuver. A lot of times, yes, we do have the vision. We have seen clarity of the vision, but there is something that's holding us back. And the only way to recognize what it is that's holding us back is we have to pray and we have to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal what's holding us back. That we're not reaching our full potential in what God has given us. And this could be in our personal lives. It could be for our marriages with our children in our households. It could be for the ministry and it could be for the business. It could be in any area of our life. Remember, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to hinder. I thought about something last night after teaching Bible study, and I can tell you I was still teaching in my sleep. I was laying there, and I was still teaching. Scripture says that hell enlarges herself. And so hell is looking to make room for people, okay? Christ came to set you free. Christ is looking for a ready bride, one who would believe by faith and move in obedience. And so what he has done for us, he has destroyed broken, annihilated the stronghold of sin. But we have to accept that in our lives. And so I'm laying there and I'm saying, I, I can literally see uh, myself and I, I, I'm saying, okay, take the gloves off because you're in a fight. Take the gloves off because Listen, you are in a fight. And when I say glove, I'm talking about um, containing yourself. Um, you're, you're in a fight. And so uh, you don't have time to sit and, and look pretty. This is a fight. This is a spiritual fight. And you are literally fighting for your freedom. You are literally fighting for your spiritual freedom. And you, can no, you can't take that lightly. You can no longer... Um, excuse it um, uh, we have to get rid of excuses oh I'll do it tomorrow whatever it is that God gave you the vision God gave you uh, once again whether it is for business or in ministry organizations whatever it is that God gave you to do you're in a fight you're in a fight to see the vision clearly you are in a fight to Pursue the vision, preparing for it, lining things up as the Holy Spirit leads and guides you. You are in a fight because the enemy does not want you to achieve anything that's pertaining to the kingdom of heaven. So he is going to throw snares and situations at you in order to stagnate you. But once that spirit has been broken from you. It can no longer hinder you. Stay free. Do not fall back into the trap of putting things off. Oh, I can do that tomorrow. Oh, I can do that next week. No, when you are led to do something, get it done. Stop procrastinating. There's no reason, no reason to procrastinate. Really, what is the reason for putting something off? I mean, if it's a dire emergency then I get that because we have those from time to time but just for the sake of not doing anything not applying yourself we have to get rid of that we that's a stronghold slowfulness is a stronghold procrastination is a stronghold doubt 
is a stronghold. And if we don't recognize that, we are not experiencing the fullness of God. We're putting things off, things that we can take care of. It's not going to take you that long. All depends on what it is. And I like to do stuff a little bit at a time, you know, to get things done properly, especially if it's a big project. But I want to tell you that today I felt this, um, this relief. I felt this release that whatever was said against me and what God has given me to do has been broken. And so as I was sitting here, I was going to talk about something else. And then I heard, stay free. You have to remain free. You cannot allow anyone, not even your own negative thoughts, to put you back into a place that you're in a slump, that you're not applying yourself, that you're not achieving anything. You cannot go back to that place. We're not going back to the place of depression. No, we're not. That spirit has been broken and destroyed from our lives. We're no longer depressed. Nope, we're no longer we're no longer dealing with that. We're no longer dealing with stagnation. You have too much work to do to be stagnant. We have our our eyes open. Uh, another thing that I was praying about is the spirit of discernment. That your eyes are enlightened to the truth and that you recognize different things spiritually. Recognize it for what it is. If anyone would rather see you out hanging out, telling you, oh, you, you can put that off till tomorrow, come hang out with me. No, that's no, that's not the type of person you need in your life. No, it's not. You need someone who is going to hold you accountable, who is going to encourage you, who is going to come from time to time. And say, where are you in your purpose, goals, and dreams? I heard you talking about it. I'm praying for you. Where are you? What's what's the what's the holdup? What are what are you afraid of? Why haven't you moved forward? Those are the type of people that we need rooting in our corner. I don't need anybody to tell me. Um, oh, you got plenty enough time to do that. Um, let's go. Always want to run the streets. Never. I don't want anybody who does not have any goals. If you don't have any goals that you've set, what do we really have in common? Because iron sharpens iron. And I don't want to be the only one in any kind of relationship that's goal oriented <clears throat> I don't so what are we working towards because in order for us to have any kind of relationship we have something in common and sometimes when, when we have individuals who are not goal oriented then there are certain conversations we're not going to have if you are not one who focuses on growth and vision, then I'm not going to discuss vision and goals with you because that's not your area. I'm going to keep our conversations mutual. But we are too late in the day to waste time and a lot of times we're trying to pump people up and they keep sticking a pin in their own tire you pumping them up and they letting the air out it 
it is enough that we have to carry ourselves. And once I'm free of something, I am free. When I've been praying about something, I've been praying about some strongholds. I've been praying about the ministry. I've been using the word of God. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rise up against me in judgment thou shalt condemn. I've been using the word. I've been casting down thoughts and imaginations that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. I've been praying to destroy and annihilate attacks against what God has given me every single day. I can't afford not to pray those prayers every day. I cannot afford not to pray that my eyes are spiritually open. I cannot afford not to submit myself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable service. I can't afford. It's too late in the day. And so God is hearing my prayer and, and he is breaking and destroying those yokes. It is the anointing that destroys the yokes. And when I'm praying, I am praying for him to reveal any attack sent out against me, any thought, any action, any word. Once again, the enemy does not want to see you prosper. He does not want to see you move forward. And when I'm talking about prospering, I'm not talking uh, merely financially. I'm talking about prospering for the kingdom of heaven. He does not want to see you move forward. He does not want you to meet the audience you're supposed to meet. He doesn't want them to hear your voice because you're giving the word of God. You're giving the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And in any way possible, if he could hinder, if he can block your audience from hearing that word that you're supposed to give, whether it is through writing books, because there are some wonderful prolific writers. Uh, there are amazing ministry teachers and evangelists, prophets, pastors, apostles, who declare the true gospel of Jesus Christ, do you think that the enemy wants your voice to be heard? No. And so he will put up a block, he will put up a barrier to hinder your word. So uh, you might uh, have a word and it's intended for the audience. Now we all have free will. And God could lead someone to, to tune in to what you're doing. And the enemy will send something to distract them. That they don't get the word. That they don't hear the word. And so I begin to pray. Any and everything. Knowingly or unknowingly. That the plans of the enemy... To attack what God has given me. Are destroyed. That the plan don't even come together. The thought that doesn't even get together. That whomever he would send. Anyone who he can influence. That it doesn't even come together. That it is broken, that it is destroyed, that it is annihilated. And I pray for their deliverance. That they are no longer under the influence of the enemy to attack not just me, but the people of God. And I can't afford to take a day off from praying. Uh-uh. I cannot afford... To lose my focus. And so if he has set you free, remain free. If you feel that destroyed from your life, that freedom that says, okay, uh, I am refocused on my purpose, my goals, my dreams. I am refocused. I am ready to get this thing going and moving forward. Listen, he has removed the barrier. 
stay free and do what you're supposed to do in that allotted season if you are a frequent listener of the balance of life I've shared this before there are certain things that we're supposed to do in every season and we can accomplish those things if we follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit if we remain diligent but I want you to pay attention to your season and I want you to recognize the highs and lows and when I say highs and lows I'm talking about when you are really enthused and energetic about what it is that you're doing and when you go through the process of you're starting to lose interest and I want you to begin to pray about that time recognize it and fight through that time work harder during those times push through those times do not allow that spirit to come and settle in on you because you're already free you're already set free when we do not fight through those time periods it's harder to come out of it it's a struggle to come out of that slump and so once he has set you free I want you to remain free don't go back into that slump but I want you to pay attention I want you to pay attention to your seasons and your cycles what's going on that you go into an area of you're starting to lose interest in what God gave you to do and then I want you to turn that into your strategic prayer because now you recognize that you go through a period of time that you're losing interest what is it what is this stronghold that comes over me at one moment I'm enthusiastic I'm producing at great levels I'm all in and then all of a sudden I hit a block I hit a roadblock and 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 I'm no longer interested and I'm and it and it seems that it's it's gradual and it's progressing recognize that pray through that season get through that time but rise up every single day and pray over what God gave you thank God for what he gave you in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path invite God in every area of your life don't exclude God it is he that hath made us and not we ourselves he is our creator and so everything that he gave us he gave it to us for a purpose and we can not exclude him for what he gave us he gave us wisdom knowledge and understanding he gave us the know-how to do what it is that we do there are many people that already have been that are here currently and that will come that God gave them talents that they didn't have to go to school for God gave it to them directly he was their direct source and they they perfected they might have never stepped into a school but God gave it to them directly and they perfected there are people like that there are more people that are going to come upon this earth that are going to have what they call is natural born gifts it's just something that they can do and you have some that go to school and they get it like that you have some that have hands on you have some people who can read it and they can grasp it you have some people that actually have to do the work and they learn that way but whatever it is that God gave you I want you to stay focused 
I want you to move forward. I don't want you to move forward three paces and take 12 back. No. Find that area. It could be a distraction. Whenever you get to a certain area, you get distracted again. Recognize that distraction and pray through that time. That that yoke is destroyed. That spirit of distraction that keeps you in a place of stagnation can no longer hinder you. It no longer has power over you. Because here is the reality of what happens. When the distraction comes and it hinders us, okay, then we have to pray our way through that and then that is destroyed from us. It is broken. But we can't always pick up where we left off. It knocks us a couple of paces back. And so we have to find a comfortable area that we can restart from. And then you get so far. And you're distracted again. And if we re really, really pay attention to the cycles and the seasons, it's at the same point at the same interval time the same intersection that the distraction comes whenever you get to that same area because remember you had to fight your way back to even get started again and so you might have like I said you you had to back up a few more paces from where you stopped at so if you stopped at level seven in order to get you rejuvenated, you have to start maybe from level five. And you get back to seven, and here comes a distraction. And it's a repeated cycle. So that's why I say pay attention to your season. Find those areas that stagnate you, that hinder you, that block you. And once you recognize it, the Holy, I believe that the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. Once you recognize it, then ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you on how to maneuver through that time, how to be an overcomer, because you are an overcomer through Christ Jesus. You already have the victory. This is where we ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. This is where we ask for counsel, which is the instructions and the directions to get through these pivotal times. And I believe that the Holy Spirit will tell you to shift because once you recognize that every time you get to level seven, that here comes a distraction, here comes a hindrance, and it knocks you off your game. Once you recognize that, then your mind ought to be renewed. Mm -hmm. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Think differently. Okay, every time I get to level seven, something comes to distract me. So now I must change my pivotal plan. You're already free. Stay free. Stay free. I'd like to invite you to visit us on our website, www.angelferguson-ministries.com. Via the website, you have the opportunity to check out our ministry, such as television and radio. The School of Ministry and Mentoring Programs, the courses that we offer. Also, our publishing division. And we are still transitioning for Hope and Truth Magazine for its own website. We've already established the website, which is found at hopeandtruthmagazine.godaddysites.com. All of our digital copies of Hope and Truth Magazine are absolutely free. And that's why we want to make it more accessible unto you. You're always in our thoughts and in our prayers. And I pray that something that we share with this radio ministry helps you along the way. I know that it helps me. I'm the first partaker. And so as I, like I said, as I was sitting here and I heard stay free, I know that he's talking to me. Have a blessed day, everyone, on purpose, because you absolutely are.